My name is Tim Bennix and this is a Turbo Tutorial. So in this short tutorial, we will be looking at some magical properties that you're getting with Nuxt 3's use fetch and use async data. And basically what you can do is you can kind of choose which keys of an object you want to be returned from your Ajax call and the one and then show those in your page. So that means you can pick and choose which things you want from that call rather than getting everything. And this is important because sometimes you get back a lot of stuff, but you really don't need all that stuff. So there's a bunch of data over the wire. And what's important here, when you're rendering Nuxt in its default mode, which is the universal rendering mode, which we'll talk about in another tutorial, um, that universal rendering mode actually renders you your page statically. So there's actually with some SSR on build, there is HTML. And then what happens, it adds the JavaScript on top and it hydrates. But to be able to hydrate the page, there needs to be a script tag on the bottom that has all the data needed to hydrate the page so few knows what to do. But sometimes if you don't need all that data that came back from your AJS call and the client, um, and you put it all in that script tag, your page becomes huge. And so when you use the pick and transform properties of use fetch and use async data and stuff, you can clean it up completely and it's much better for performance and all of that stuff. So how about we go into the computer, into VS Code, and I'll show you how that's done. So when we have a look now at um, the VS Code here, I have a very simple setup. This is basically a Nuxt project without any um, setup, set, settings, nothing. It's just out of the box. And I have created an internal route for API slash friends. So when we have a look, server API friends. And in here, um, I basically just took some lines for a, from a very iconic episode of the Friends TV show. Um, if you don't know Friends, you're probably a bunch younger than me. Check it out on Netflix. It's a lot of fun. So basically, there's two lines here. Ross and Rachel, they're saying some stuff. And that's it. So when we look in the browser of what comes out, it's literally this, Ross and Rachel. Um, so what I now want to do is imagine this came from some headless CMS. It's a huge output. And let's say I only want to see Ross and not Rachel because I don't need that data, right? So before we do that, let's have a look at what that script tag looks like, right? Here's the script and there's the data that came from our API call. Here we have Rachel and here we have Ross. But I only need Ross and not Rachel. So let's remove this data. So what we can do is add some options here and we can say pick and um, here we say, you know what? I only want Ross. Let's refresh. And here's now only Ross that came back. And when you have a look oops, at that script tag, it says only Ross. There is no Rachel anymore. So we have now completely cleaned up the thing with what we want. So let's put it back because there's another thing that's really interesting. Because what if that data that came back from your API call is great, it's exactly what you need, but it's just in the format that your components don't really like. Like in this case, this is an object with key and value, but maybe I want an array with object inside that says name, Rachel, message, blah, blah, blah. That's much easier for me to work with, imagine, right? So what we can do is add another thing that's called a transform, and I have this in my copy paste because it's a bunch of code. And so basically, um, what you can do here is actually add a transform property. And what you get is the response and you can do whatever you want with that response here. So I'm just looping over my response and I'm getting like for each person in the response, make an array and push in the name of the person and then the message and then return the result. And so when we do that and we go to the browser and refresh, what we get back is name equals Rachel, message, blah, blah, blah. And this is actually really handy because you can first, you pick what you need, then you transform it into something amazing and you tailored the JSON to what you need in your components. So you don't have to adapt your components when you do another API call to another system or maybe when it updates. And so that's what I wanted to show you. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next Turbo Tutorial. Cheers.